Hi all, let's have a look at the fascinating encounter Ethereal against Leela in, in TSEC Season 13, Round 3. E4 from Ethereal. We have, this is the start position of both sides to explore. So that's the book move, uh, book moves. Knight F3, E6, we have an open Sicilian. Uh, knight F6 from Leela. A3, slightly unusual, more usual is Knight DB5 here, according to Chess Base Live Book, which is a way of getting into things like the Sicilian Tveshnikov. But a3 is an interesting move and it has been used a lot as well. d6, we have bishop e3, bishop e7, bishop e2, both sides castle, queen c7, knight db5, queen b8, f4, a6, the knight goes back, knight takes, bishop takes, so it's pretty, it looks like pretty standard stuff. b5, black putting pressure now potentially on the e4 point. Queen d2, bishop b7. E5. Now, interesting decision here. Knight D7. Uh, it seems as though might it might be possible to play Knight E4. This might need more analysis. But on my analysis, it seems as though Black might actually be better off doing this than the game continuation. Even though it looks a little bit awkward, this might be interesting uh, to check out. This position here. It seems Black might technically have a small edge. But anyway, Knight D7 was played. And the problem here is white seems to be establishing a strong central point, which is a good basis for later attacking the black king. So rook ad1, d takes, f takes, rook ac8. b4, very, very interesting decision, creating a lot of interesting possibilities by weakening that c file. Uh, knight b8, knight e4. So already you might think, well, what about the pawn? Well, there's things like bishop d3 here, which are very dangerous. Black actually. Leader actually gave up the knight square bishop, which is a big commitment in itself. Uh, giving up the light square bishop here and that pressure on white. It seems as though white's kind of got a free hand here. This is totally impossible here because of bishop d3, threatening the queen and, and then and also h7, checkmate. So uh, we have knight c6, bishop a1, and now a5, which looks to be um, positionally, you know. Interesting on the queen side. Uh, we have rook d3, and now leader plays g6. Uh, on a takes, white probably does best here to go in for rook h3. This position of the king h1, getting the king out of trouble, is very, very dangerous for black. Uh, example takes queen e3 with idea of queen h6. Here, uh, bishop d3, making things even more effective. Uh, f5 takes, supported by the bishop on a1. This is just looking very nasty. <laughs> very, very nasty indeed. This kind of continuation, uh, leader's getting hacked to death. Big advantage for white. So this is really a crucial uh, situation here, uh, where... It seems a takes b is asking for rook h3. If white did routinely play a takes in return, then this position technically it seems okay for black. Uh, but that's not going to happen. That rook left is going to be used instead, most likely. So g6 in advance of the rook left. King h1, a takes, and now the rook left here anyway. So there's a big idea of queen e3 to h6. Now Leela parries that in advance with bishop g5. So if taking here again, we see the game, the same pattern, queen e3, to go into h6. It's just very, very dangerous, the same kind of pattern. It's Even if black's got this dangerous looking pawn there, uh, white can get a uh, huge pressure on f8 now, threatening rook takes f8. This position is just exceptionally uh, dangerous. Uh, for black, in fact, which is also Lila's also basically a piece down as well uh, in that line. Uh, yeah, the f6 was a bit radical giving up a piece here in that line. <laughs> yeah, to, to be honest, it wasn't enough for the pawn. So, uh, bishop g5, a takes now, and we have knight e7, which does discover an attack on c2. Uh, an alternative here, as the example, queen b7, bishop d3. Uh, this shows white's got a lot of pressure as well after h4, 
queen f4 there's a lot of pressure on the f file and basically that pawn structure can be broken down this is just an illustration to show why it has got significant uh king side pressure here the black could be hacked to death like this so it's not uh, that pleasant behind the scenes at the moment knight e7 we have bishop d4 uh now rook fd8 is played it's interesting here to consider queen takes c2 as well uh this position uh is interesting but i believe it's a little bit like the game continuation why has the bishop pair and the prospect of a b pawn here uh it's very very interesting we may as well understand this from the game uh, game continuation because rook fd8 was inserted uh, bishop takes queen takes c2 we have a similar sort of scenario bishop d3 queen d2 bishop b6 rook d7 bishop b5 so these rooks are being harassed rook d5 again harassing the rooks and now this does seem to be a really key id idea from ethereal which on my analysis really sh actually is a great way of proving uh, white's advantage. This retreat, bishop g1, secures the white king a bit. The bishop doesn't get in the way of the rooks on the f file, for example. It's got big advantages. It supports this b pawn push to b6. It doesn't get in the way of anything. Uh, it seems very, very uh, dangerous. Uh, there might even be. Uh, potentially back row tricks if the bishop had gone say to f2 i think mean, there's even there looks as though there's back row tricks uh, almost uh, almost uh, anyway bishop g1 is is safer there isn't it's not working there so king g7 bishop b5 and now uh rook d3 here queen b2 the rook goes back hitting f7 knight f5 and it seems for a moment this looks as though black leader is uh, okay here for a moment however let's see uh bishop d8 is played b5 this pawn is a bit of a menace you can see the bishop pair is is good with this pawn here especially this bishop on g1 uh rook c1 is played and now g4 yeah trying to nudge the knight out of the way so leader exchanges a pair of rooks so this isn't so destructive and now uh the it seems unusual to play this knight h4 uh, <laughs> but h6 doesn't seem that palatable either <laughs> uh, we have bishop d4 hitting the queen uh, on b6 here uh then taking uh this is backfiring on white because of rook c1 in this position pinning that and that's that's great for black so uh we see bishop d4 kicking the queen bishop e3 queen b2 and now another key move which is really really important here that ethereal plays uh, which is really a superhuman move in many respects. Uh, we sometimes see Magnus Coulson improving his king before going on to an attack. Here, this move seems to improve the king, king ever so slightly, h3. As if b6, concretely, here, bishop takes, uh, there's um, bishop takes, queen f4, uh, as, the, as a try, but now there's queen check, Bishop e4, queen e7. This this is okay for black. Uh, so h h3, uh, we have queen b3, b6. Now uh, b6 is actually uh, possible here. It seems rook c3 is played on bishop takes b6. rook b1 uh, bishop takes e3 we see in this line uh, the king makes use of h2 <laughs> and uh, incredibly um, after rook e1 it, it's still very dangerous uh, black's activities but uh, if we look at this variation in particular rook takes 
uh, bishop c5 uh, white ends up being in the driving seat here uh, the knight by the way was immune in this line because of check and then bishop g3 <laughs> securing the exits back is is a mating net for the white king for example like this is a mating net for the white king so anyway the use of h2 here you see being demonstrated in this line with bishop takes b6 uh, that it ends up being slightly better for white so that's that's why this h3 is, is important uh, just to give the king a, a bit more possibilities in some of the counter-attacking lines so rook c3 was played we have queen f4 hitting f7 now f6 e takes this doesn't seem very pleasant for black yeah Queen e4 looks to play Queen b7 check here. Uh, so Lingna takes on b6. If Rook takes d3, then check. This is just devastating. Check. And Bishop h6 checkmate, for example. So Bishop takes b6 here was played. Uh, Bishop d2. Uh, now Rook c2. Now here, if white plays bishop takes, then that's checkmate. Uh, so uh, we we have uh, bishop e3 challenging the bishop. Rook c3, bishop d2, a bit of repetition until here, bishop g5 hitting the knight. And the knight's kind of a liability here. Uh, now we have bishop c7, which is desperate, basically. Yeah, I think leaders in a bad way here. Uh, bishop c7, bishop takes h4, check, uh, taking on h3, bishop c4. Yeah, it looks to be a very, very bad uh, scenario emerging here. Check. Uh, on rook g3, this, this doesn't help matters. White just takes here and plays queen g2. And this check is not that lethal, actually, because here uh, there's queen h2. Well, that is a big advantage. So uh, basically, a uh, check was played. Bishop f2, queen d6. So Lila is material down, and white does seem to be able to parry uh, the immediate attack. So check, bishop g1. Check, queens get exchanged off. So white is basically uh, a bishop up. Check. Uh, rook takes e6, bishop c5. Now, to human players, this might be a little bit tricky, but uh, let's see what happens. Uh, so g takes, check, bishop takes h5. Check, it seems as though the king is essentially driven uh, down the board. The black king is going to be driven down the board soon. You can see that happening now. The black king's gravitation is dropping. Uh, this side of this side of the board, uh, Bishop e3. We have Bishop d3. Uh, now check, check, check. Bishop e4 taking away a lot of squares. Check, check. And yeah, you see the king is is just coming down the board. The black king is being squished here. I'm afraid uh, until sorry this position uh, the game actually was terminated here so it's like plus 6.5 both sides evaluate plus 6.5 for eight half moves eight ply uh, the game continuation could have ended uh, with check bishop d6 uh, as a, just spike checks there until bishop b5 and then this is desperate and then white's totally winning uh so yeah uh the leader team i mean i was gutted Obviously, if you're on the Leela, on the if you're a Leela fan, you'll be gutted with this game. On the other hand, check out uh, the interview given uh, by Ethereal. It's it's a one, it's a very very clever guy, very nice guy, uh, it seems. And I mean, it's open source. Uh, Ethereal, uh, great credit to him, absolutely uh, great credit. He seems to have. Uh, if you check out the interview, it seems to have created a great test environment for running through pa patches very, very rapidly. 
uh, to get evolutionary kind of updates very quickly. So it does seem to be in the spirit of, of Lila as well, his setup for, for the traditional AB engines, traditional exhaustive search style engine. But I think he, he said in the interview he believes in um, the future might be NN dominated as graphics cards get really, really powerful. Uh, so I think he sees it on the horizon. But check out his interview. He's a really nice guy. Great credit to him for his fantastic achievement. Uh, Ethereal, since this game, has really dominated uh, basically Division 3. Absolutely dominated. Uh, so this is a very, very special very very special uh, engine here in ethereal a fantastically uh, played game very very accurate very nice finesses very dynamic aggressive style as well to be fair uh, so at the moment I'm not entirely sure at this point I'm not entirely sure I mean we're a few rounds now after this game uh, leaders drawn quite a few but we'll see in the next kind of set of games uh, so anyway comments questions like shares appreciated on this thanks very much